This video is designed to provide a visual explanation of the normal distribution, which is arguably the most important concept in statistics that you'll learn because it's used so widely in social sciences, natural sciences, and to model things like populations. Uh, you may have even heard of the bell curve in class, maybe when one of your teachers decided to curve one of your test results. That means that they're using the normal distribution. Uh, you can see it kind of looks like a bell, and that's why it gets the, the slang term, a bell curve. So I want to highlight in this video three important concepts about this normal distribution curve. The first one is that it is a continuous, continuous, probability distribution. So this is a continuous probability distribution. That means that it's used to model continuous random variables and we can determine the probability that whatever ran continuous random variable we're talking about falls between any two values. Remember when we're talking continuous random variables, we can't say that what's the probability that x equals some value, let's say 10, if x is continuous, because this probability is zero. A continuous random variable has zero probability of landing on any one exact value. Instead, we might ask something like, what's the probability that x falls between, um, say, 10 and, so x falls between 10 and 12. Okay, so on the curve, maybe 10 and 12 are somewhere uh, here. Let's say this is 10 down here, and this is 12 down here. So we want to find the probability that our random variable x falls between these two values. The way we do that using the normal distribution is to calculate the area under the curve between those two values. So the answer to that probability would actually be that area highlighted in green. The second thing we want to take away from this video is that every normal distribution has two parameters. Parameters. And these two parameters are going to dictate how tall or how short and how skinny or how wide this particular curve is going to be. Even though it's going to keep the same general shape, it can change in its height and its width. The two parameters are the mean of the distribution, and we use mu to signify that, and the standard deviation, standard deviation of our uh, distribution, and we use the Greek letter sigma to uh, signify the standard deviation. Now the mean of any normal curve is always found straight down the middle of the curve. And that's because if a random variable is normally distributed, we say that the mean or the average is the most common value that that variable can take on. So you can think of the height of this, of any normal distribution curve, as the frequency. You can see the peak frequency happens at the mean, which is right in the middle. The standard deviation represents how wide uh, and how spread out the rest of the data is around the mean. So I'll give you two different examples of normal curves with the same mean. We could have one that looks like this. Same mean, still centered at that mu, but the standard deviation is much smaller because you can see the data is much more crowded around the mean. So that's with a, uh, smaller, a smaller sigma. Or we could have it the other way around where the curve it once again has the same mean, but is much flatter and wider. So this would be a larger, a larger standard deviation because the data is much more spread out around the mean. It's not like every value or the majority of values are right close to the mean. It means that there's, there's many more values that this uh, particular random variable can take on. So that's two examples of other normal distributions keeping the same mean, but you can see how the standard deviation changes the shape. The third property we want to look at is the fact that the normal distribution is symmetric. So it has symmetry. 
And what does this mean? Symmetric means that it's the same on one side as it is on the other side. So you can see that the, the mean basically cuts the curve right in half, and the left side is identical in size and structure to the right side. This becomes a really important property once we bring examples um, into place. Now remember that we said we, we calculate the probability of x falling between any particular values uh, using the area under the curve. Well, if that's the case, then the total area under the entire curve, all the way to the ends, must be 1, right? Total area, because the, the total area equals the total probability, it equals 1, or 100%. Therefore, if the mean truly splits this curve down the middle, we must have 50% or 0.5 in each half. And that's a really important property to, to recall. Now let's take a look at an example where we actually put some values to our mean and standard deviation, and we'll see once again how uh, symmetry can impact it. So here's our example. We've got a random variable x, which is continuous because it's measuring weight, and it's the weight of a randomly selected American man, just as an example. We also see that x follows a normal distribution, that's this notation here, with, again, there's the two parameters, the mean of 180. So I'm going to put that right on our curve here. Mean is 180, I know the mean goes right down the middle, and a standard deviation of 30. Great, so that means if we were to go one standard deviation out to either side, we'd go out 30 pounds. Now, the question says, what's the probability that x is less than 150? So, let's think about that in words. That means, what's the probability that we take one randomly selected American man, and his weight is less than 150 pounds? Let's visualize what that's going to look like on the curve. 150 is to the left of 180. It's less than. So, I'm going to say 150 is right about here. And we know that to find the probability using our normal distribution, we need to find the area under the curve. So the answer to that first one is going to be all of this area calculated. And we can actually find this number using a normal table or from first principles, but we usually just look at the table in a statistics textbook or a table that you're given on a test. Um, and that, that's for a different video. Right now I want to highlight the symmetry. Let's look at the second ask. It says, what's the probability that X, again, this randomly selected man, has a weight over 210 pounds? Well, that's going to be 210 is to the right of 180, 210, and it's going to be this area under the curve, whatever this area is. Now, very important here. Look at how far away 210 is from 180. It's 30 pounds away, which happens to be one standard deviation away. Look at how far 150 is from 80. That's also 30 pounds away in the other direction. Because of the symmetrical property of the, standard, of the, the normal distribution, we know that these probabilities and these areas under the curve are going to be equal because we're the exact same distance from the mean on each side. So just like those two green areas are equal, if we were to calculate the area in blue here to the left of the mean and the area in blue here to the right of the mean, those would also be equal. So I'm going to put an equal sign between these two probabilities because I know from the property of symmetry the two green areas are equal.